video, I'll be sketching with water-soluble marker on watercolor background. The marker is called Elegant Rider. It's by Speedball. I believe it's made for calligraphers, but I tested it at a music recital that I attended and I thought it was a lot of fun to use because the lines it produces are black, but when we smudge it with a brush with some water, the ink kind of breaks up into the pigments that it consists of and gives us interesting turquoise, pink and blue shades that suddenly appear. I have a sheet of watercolor paper that I threw some colors on it for a demonstration, for my camellia demonstration, but I didn't use it. And I also have some kind of turquoise pinks and purples in the background. So I thought if I sketched a horse, here's the photo that I found on Facebook group for reference photos for artists. I thought if I sketch this beautiful horse and then soften the marker lines with water and maybe I added a little bit of watercolor, I could get some interesting results. So I sketched the horse on top of my watercolor paper. Horses are not easy to draw, they're pretty complicated subjects, so I didn't risk it going with a marker right away. I tried to produce an accurate drawing first. I wasn't worried about the pencil lines because they would be very easy to erase since they're going on top of watercolor and not underneath it. Speedball produces several versions of these markers. The one I have has a chisel shaped tip. There are also just pointy ones, but not all of them have the ink that breaks up into all these colors. So I think you have to have the one that has a black tip because the other ones, it will be just regular black ink. Let's sketch the horse. It's a little different sketching on watercolor paper because of the texture. My main goal is not to produce a heavy continuous black line, but to find just the darkest areas in the reference photo and show them in my sketch. The trick with sketching with water-soluble markers or water-soluble pencils for that matter is not to do too much. We can always add more color, a few more lines, or even like I'm going to do add some more shading with watercolor. But if we do too much, this ink is staining, so it's impossible to completely lift off the paper. It's going to stay in the fibers of the paper and that's going to be it. We'll have to cover it with white or something like that start making corrections. So to avoid that, it's always best to go lightly at first and leave some gaps in your line because you can always add more, connect different shapes, add some dark accents if you need to, but it's hard to take away ink. Sketching animals, I know I had that problem for the longest time. They would look very cartoony and even now I can see that horse looks a little cartoony and I think that's because we tend to overemphasize the eyes and we also get the proportions just very slightly off and that creates that stylized effect. So I'm trying to be as precise as possible and also to have the same level of detail throughout my sketch. So I don't want the face to be more detailed and I don't want the eyes to stand out and the rest of the horse kind of be very abstract. to paint the shadows on the horse. You see when I blended that eye a little bit better with the rest of the face, the horse immediately started looking a little more realistic. The horse has very interesting markings. Part of the mane is black, some of it is white, the, the tail is white, it's wearing white stockings, so it's a bit tricky to paint animals like that, but we'll just try to do our best. I will use some opaque white in just a second. I need something to paint all those markings with. For now, I am painting the shadows. I'm carefully looking at the reference photo and trying to find all the shadows that I see in my subject. Started with large forms, of course. <laughs>
the shadow under the horse give it something to stand on I shouldn't have connected that leg there is no shadow under the front leg I'm going to open my watercolors I think I'm just not getting enough ink from the markers I'm using moon glow it's a neutral purple color by Daniel Smith I think it goes well with the color of the marker I could have used something like indigo or if you have paints gray I think it will go well with these markers the big advantage of this technique in my opinion is its portability so to say I'm working in my studio but if you're on location somewhere it would be very easy to throw on some watercolors on a piece of paper for the background maybe even do it in advance at home if you know where you're going maybe some blues or some yellows and then draw all the detail with the marker and then soften it with the water pen that I showed you in the beginning so basically you can have just a tiny set of watercolors your sketchbook pencil a marker and a water pen and that's all you need you don't need to bring a lot of supplies to get a pretty developed realistic sketch. I'm going to paint the white markings on the horse. I'm using pen white ink. I could have used a white marker, probably would have been easier. All my white markers are kind of getting old and hard to use. I need to get some new ones. So for now I'll just use the ink. It works great with a brush, same brush that I use for watercolor. And I'm going to add all the white markings on the horse. Also going lightly because always easy to add things, but with watercolor it's a little harder to take things away. Maybe a little splattering for the background. Break up that background a little bit, make the horse stand out more. Let's darken a few more areas kind of restate our darks. Watercolor usually needs at least a couple of layers to get the strength that we need, the tonal range. The marker line can be softened to some extent with water if you scrub them a little bit, but you can't completely take them out. And also when the white ink goes on top of those lines, they bleed into the ink and they kind of color the, the white ink. Give him a more dramatic mane. Can make the tail a little more dramatic. I messed up his eye. I'm going to pick this up and just let it dry. I'll add a little bit depth to the eye with the marker when everything dries. And I think we're done. This was a quick sketch with Elegant Rider Marker by Speedball with addition of watercolor. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you'll check out other videos on line and wash sketching. I listed them all in community posts. Just click on the community tab and you see all the links. Thanks again and I'll see you in the next video here on Tamirup Studios channel. Help other artists to see this video by liking or sharing it. To see future videos, subscribe and click the bell button to be notified when they're published. Thanks again and stay creative!